Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now today I'm going to be doing a review of the Neat Petite Classics. Uh, might be a quick review because uh, I haven't got them for very long and I'm, I should be doing other things basically. Um, so I'm trying to squeeze this in quickly um, between, between jobs. Uh, because, partly because these are absolutely brilliant and I didn't want to lose the opportunity to talk about them on, 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 on camera really. Um, firstly, let's just talk about the history of Neat because um, 30 years ago, 31 years ago probably now, their first product was the Petite and that was literally all they did. They did the, the neat Petite was, was it. Um, but they made a massive sort of impact in the sort of audio, audio world. I, re I, remember them, I remember them coming out and hearing them for the first time. Um, small box, seemingly quite ordinary drivers in there. And this massive engaging sound and it, it, it sort of I remember sort of the disbelief that how on earth are they doing that? Um, I mean, there was other speakers at the time, I and mean, there was things like Acoustic Energy A1, there was Roger Sellers 35As, Link Cans, there was um, various speakers from Roy, but they all had their own little either niche or quirks. I mean, the A1s are hard to drive, LS 35As tended to be put with quad and suited certain sorts of people. Uh, cans tended to be used with Lynn name stuff and suited certain sorts of people. The Roids, I think, with the exception of probably of the Sintra, were aimed at the lower end of the market, but they were just a lovely, clear, punchy sounding speaker for, for probably things lower down, really. Uh, like I say, it's apart from the Sintra, which was wonderful. Um, but this get, quite long comes the Petit, and it sounds great on budget system, but put it on a high-end system, it's just they just keep kept getting better. They were, like I say, a huge, huge sound style, very engaging, very natural sound. Um, projected into a room really well, they weren't, you weren't stuck to just using them in small rooms, which quite often with small speakers is the thing. I mean, there's things nowadays, there's a few small speakers that I do, you can't put into bigger rooms because they just don't, they just don't project enough. Uh, but I seem, to, I seem to remember the originals were very good at that. You'd, you, you could sort of lose them in the room and you know, get this massive sound off them. Now the, the new versions, I mean, there's been, there have been very, pick me a drink up, I'm not, not drunk enough. There's been various incarnations of the Petite since the original, there's only Petite 2, Petite 3, TSSX, um, and they went from an original, I can't think what the original, was it, was it an inverted dome or a, uh, I can't really think what the original drivers were, but they went through different, like into a ribbon driver and whatever else. The new version, we can see we've got ribbon driver, um, fairly decent base unit, nice beautifully made cabinet actually. Um, what the classic is, the classic is the continuation of the petite name, but the reason that they've sort of brought it back was it's a bit of a longer story actually. Because they had a 30th anniversary, they, well, it was like, well, what's, what better can we do than produce a really nice version of the petite um, to sort of celebrate the 30 years? And that sort of became the petite anniversary, which was slightly taller than this, same drivers, same configuration, everything, but yeah, slightly bigger cabinet. Uh, different finishes, I think, as well. I can't, I can't quite remember the anniversary what the finishes were, but there was slightly more luxurious finishes than the than the classic. Uh, but it came with a few little odds and ends in in the pack. So you've got, like, I think, there's a, a neat pen and a, a USB with uh, Bob Sturgeon's music on it, which he's a, the owner and he's he's a great musician, to be fair. Um, so there was a, like a little special thing that they did. Just did a run of a hundred anniversaries, and that was it. That was so successful that they couldn't really not continue it in some way um, and the continuation is the classic which I'm so pleased about because like I say um, I, all I did was put these on in the shop downstairs and if anybody's been into the shop will know I, I tend not to do demonstrations down there because the acoustics are terrible and the cellars underneath the floor and all the bass disappears in, downstairs everything sounds awful down there um, but I put these on and it, straight away it was like these are something special these are something very special because I've had all sorts of things just playing down there and um, it's not often that I put something on and think, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, um, the Petit, Petit Classic, it's um, again, taking me totally by surprise. Um, I think I'm going to do loads of, and to be honest, somebody actually, yeah, somebody came into the shop while they were playing downstairs. They'd, well, I think they'd been connected up for an hour and somebody walks in so, oh, these are very interesting. Oh, I, and bought a pair. And sort of ordered a pair on the spot. Didn't try them at home, didn't try them in the den rooms, just heard them in the shop and said, yeah, I'll have some of those. They're really good. Uh, I mean, they're not cheap. I mean, I, I've told the price to a few people and they've gone, really? 
the two thousand pounds. But if you compare them to other things, that, you know, on the market at the time, at, at the moment, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything that really approaches them sound quality wise. And there's things that I do that are seriously more expensive than this that aren't really that much better. Um, I'm not going to mention names, but um, yeah, I think they've they've really hit on with these. I thought, I'm, like I said, really pleased, really pleased with them. Um, uh, construction wise, I mean, they're, they're sort of. I think they need a good stand. Actually, I've been I've been running them up in the top dem room today uh, on solid steel stands, which I'll show you in a second. Actually, I'll just move the camera around and show you that uh, in white on the white so solid steel stand. They look really good. They just seem as though they're just the right proportions for them. Um, they are ported. Uh, interestingly, it's twin port. They've got a, a damp port, one with a, a foam bung in it, and a, an open port. I haven't asked them actually. Um, with this, whether or not the, the foam bung is sort of an optional, because a lot of speakers come with bungs to slow the airflow down a little bit. It might just be that that's a method of tuning it, actually. But they seem to be fairly happy close in, they seem to be fairly happy away from a wall, they seem to be fairly happy whatever you do with them, whatever you drive them with, whatever you do to them, these just seem to be good, uh, which is qu quite unusual for speakers. You don't often get that, really, where they, they just seem to be good in all situations. But then they do seem as though they get better. If you put a bigger amp on there, you can tell you know the actual um, you can tell the quality of what you're putting through them because they just they, they just increase in line. So, so yeah, um, can't say anymore really. I think that's about it. What I'll do, like I said, I'll, sh I'll show you them on the stand because I think that they look really good. Um, yeah, I'll turn the camera around and have a look at that. Yeah, so that's the the petite on the uh, solid steel stand. I think I just think it suits it really well. It's uh, I mean obviously the white's sort of convenient. That it's that it's used. but they, I mean they, you can get the petites in like a texture black. This is like a satin white, uh, which is really nice, just beautifully finished. Um, and there's like the texture black I saw at the kind of show, and that's that's actually better than it sounds. Actually, texture black you sort of think of PA speakers, but it's not like that. It's uh, it's a, a decent quality finish actually. Um, so yeah, I think that yeah, I don't know if you agree with that, but I think they look really good on those. Um, yeah, you can sort of see the drive is a bit better ribbon ribbon trouble unit. Uh, I think it's about a five inch base on those, whatever, but it's, yeah, no, it's like it's, it just seems to work really well. Yeah, so that's the Neat Petite Classic. I mean, I must admit, I've always really liked small stand mount speakers. There's some, something about um, the sort of clarity of them and the, the sort of the dynamics and also somehow the sort of psychological thing of looking at a small speaker and it having this huge sound. And I think Bob particularly, um, He's a bit of a magician in this respect, really, because if you think about historically, the, the Petites, there's been the IOTA, the IOTA Alpha, even the SX3 Motives, which are only small speakers, but it's a huge sound. And they, they're all, all these models are very, very engaging, very interesting to listen to and hold your attention, which is what you want, really. So, yeah, full marks uh, to, to the, the Petites. I think, I think they should do really well, well, they will do really well. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there because I've got things to do. And... Um, I will be seeing you in future videos very soon. I've got quite a few things lined up. I just need to, the shop just needs to quieten up a little bit and I'll, uh, I'll, be, I'll be back in front of the camera before you know it. Okay, thank you. For, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like and I'll see you in a future video. Thanks very much.